Thank you very much again, Miss Kath, Kath Esquadra, for being in the show. Uh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Kath. <laughs> so again, yeah, thank you for for um, the time for accepting my invitation. Even though you don't know what uh, what this podcast is for, you still said yes. So again, thank you. <laughs> thank you and for the opportunity. All right. So uh, for those who don't know you, Kath. Could you give us a, a brief introduction of how you started in physical therapy and what are your roles right now? Uh, okay, so I'm Catherine Joy Esquadra. I am currently affiliated in the University of Santa Tomas. I'm an academician for, I think, for the past approximately seven to eight years. And uh, my interest right now is into interprofessional education and in into research methodology so what how did i get into physical therapy yes. um mm-hmm. to be honest initially i my dream was to be a medical doctor uh, okay I think, like most <laughs> of the filipinos right. and it was actually a recommendation of my uncle who was a physical therapist uh, in the middle east before to take up physical therapy as a pre-medicine course because according to him, it's a good pre-med course because it has anatomy and physiology. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, if ever I don't want to proceed with medicine anymore, okay. I could still get a job because it's a separate profession by itself. Right, right. I think that's uh, a lot of Filipinos are uh, thinking that way. So if, if, if ever they don't go or proceed to uh, yeah, med school, to they have a fallback. Yeah. So... You yes. mentioned because uh, I met you when we when I was also teaching in UST, and then I was already amazed how you were able to yeah really <laughs> I'm already <laughs> amazed with how you juggle um, what do you call this uh, the the data analysis part in Resmet because. Mm. I I was having a hard time um, understanding data analysis. I love numbers, but and I love research, but I'm not sure about data analysis. So I leave it up to the statisticians. statisticians but okay. yes, but you do that too, right? You, yes. you also analyze data for other um, researchers, right? So yes. Where uh, you, right now, if I have a free time, I do that. Uh huh. So where did you get that? Um, inclination to to research methods to data analysis um well to be honest uh, back in high school i initially disliked math Mm -hmm. when i was in first year high school because yes (laughs) (laughs) believe it or not uh because if i remember it correctly (laughs) my first Uh my first exam major exam in math in high school i think i got a grade of line of eight po. So, mm-hmm. yun. Medyo na, na frustrate ako. So, I initially really dislike math. But later mm-hmm. on, um, upon trying other fields of math, the algebra specifically mm-hmm. po, uh, um, I liked it. Maybe because mm-hmm. may formula. Okay? Okay. So, I think, um, because, as, well, my personality po kasi it's more of I overanalyze a lot uh-huh. of the times. Okay. So, Yun yung nakita kong beauty with math eh, is that may formula ka na if you follow and if you already have a formula, you just plug in the numbers and then you'll see the correct answer. So as simple as that, that's why I, yeah, siguro yun po talaga, yun yung nag-start ng pagkagusto ko with math and with research. Because you have an algorithm to follow. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you also have to memorize. Yeah, you have to also be good in memorization. Uh, oh, right? A little bit. Because <laughs> <laughs> for me. Sure, na yan na talaga ako go. Because <laughs> <laughs> for me, uh, when I started, when you when the rest was just a rest myth, started with a uh, uh, group data, tama ba? Group data and group data. Ah, tama. Natuwa ako kasi it's it's numbers. That was there was a. Uh, there was an exam. I don't know if it's midterms or finals. Oh, midterms. Probably midterms or first shifting. Now, I forgot my I forgot my calculator. Eh, kailangan igugroup mo yung data. Sabi ko, oh my goodness. Pero kinaya ko naman siya. Kinaya ko siya without a calculator. Sabi ko, I really, I really like numbers kung ganun. Pero nung 
when it went further na, na I mean, nando na yung mga tools, sabi ko, para bakit hindi ko kaya to? <laughs> so, I was really amazed on, on how you try to teach uh, those concepts to students. So, how do you, for, for students who have a hard time grasping concepts like that, how do you make it easy for them? Um, siguro po, one of the things that I have learned in graduate school is that you have to teach it how you learn it. Okay. So, so usually kasi every time I I read or learn something new, mm -hmm. to be honest, hindi ko siya mamememorize if I don't understand it. So, mm -hmm. ganon. So, uh, as much as possible, every time I... I, I teach yun niya. It's how I really learned it. And as I've mentioned a while ago, ano kasi ako, medyo ma-algorithm ako. So, if you would look at my lessons, mayroong, okay, step one, okay, where will you start? Step yeah, yeah, two, step three, that one, that one. medyo ganon. Uh -oh. So, ganon. Oh, so, ganon talaga. <laughs> medyo ganon ako. So, that's why, siguro ganon, yun yung reason bakit ko siya nagustuhan and that's how I teach it again. Uh, so, basta, you understand the process, magigets mo na yung concept. So para yes, more of ganun talaga ako. Para may flow chart ka na. Yes, yes, so oh, oh, algorithm. Yes, here, no, down there, parang ganun. Ah, yes. okay, okay. Yes. Makes sense. Yes. Ah, and I think yun talaga yung beauty ng research. Although to be honest nung simula, akala ko talaga parang yung research parang puro scientific breakthrough, knowing what is the most valid assessment tool, knowing right. what is the most valid management. But right. later on I've realized that uh, it's research would not tell you always what is right, but research would tell you how to know what is right from what is wrong. Because research is really the process of thinking. Uh, Kaya, ayun. <laughs> ay, uh, parang ano siya, it sounds like a hugot. Ah. Pero maganda yung, maganda yung lesson. Ah. Research teaches Kasi yun, you. Yun naman talaga eh. um, uh -huh. What I always tell my students po is, um, Yung what is true right now will mm -hmm. not always be true after five years, after right. ten years. So, so siguro it debunk, eh. may something talaga na dapat ma-instill ma sa kanila. It's their ability to decipher what is right and what is wrong. So, yun, it's the process. And right. I think yun yung purpose of research. Mm -hmm. Hindi talaga yung ano, yung mga high polluting words. Uh -huh. It's really knowing how to decipher what's right from what's wrong. Oh, okay. So it's not really so in research, nothing is absolute. What if? Yes, I think in life, din naman sir. So bad guy. Yeah, the only permanent <laughs> thing is change, right? In the yes, constant. So, okay. <laughs> Aba, and din. for PT, rin naman talaga, kasi de ba yung mga dating nagwork before, mm -hmm. yung mga dating nagiging popular. Eh, mm -hmm. Right now, may mga lumalabas na research na hindi talaga siya okay. But mm -hmm. we cannot say na hindi, hindi talaga siya okay to begin with. Kasi baka dati talaga okay siya, pero ngayon hindi na siya okay. Kasi maraming factors eh. Mm -hmm. Kaya yun, things, the truth will always change. <laughs> Correct. Parang ganun. So you have to know how to know which is the truth, which is not the truth at this point in time. So yun. Right. But you also said before, I, I don't know if it was you, but I read somewhere before that uh, even parang if something doesn't have, um, what do you call this, a proof of effectivity, does it mean that it's not effective? Yes, yes. So, even if there's no proof, it doesn't mean that it's not true. It doesn't mean that it's not true. It's not true. Parang I think uh -huh. the exact one was the absence of evidence doesn't necessarily mean that it's not effective. Right, right. So ganon pa rin ang paniniwala. It's it's even if there is no evidence, we try to decipher why it works or why it yes. doesn't work. Oh. Yes. Because well, siguro iba iba lang rin yung pananaw. But mm -hmm. again, different things will work for different people. Mm -hmm. for different setting for different timeline so yon if it, it's your ability to yun nga, critically appraise to critically analyze yun naman yung importante mm -hmm. so it's not so research methods really teach you a lot more right. on uh, reasoning talaga siya and process. discerning and deciphering nice yes sir, <laughs> yes, sir. So, so hindi naman talaga siya highfalutin talaga no right. kasi so, technically 
part naman in our process, di ba? When we are doing our assessment for planning as PTs, ginagawa naman din talaga natin siya. True. And we also, for treatment, we also try to uh, look for evidences or, or articles that point us to a good direction to make a, yes, a proper clinical decision, right? Yes. Amazing. So yes. that is why you're interested in research. Pero paano ka naman napunta sa akadin? Just go. <laughs> uh, well, for that one, to, get, to be honest, uh, that day I had the promise to myself na I won't go to academe because mm -hmm. um, we're actually a family of teachers. Oh, uh, my okay. dad is a professor in Philippine, uh, in Polytechnic University of the Philippines. And then my my grandpa and my grandma, mother's side, both teachers rin po, uh, in elementary. And then my uncle, father's side, also a teacher. My, my aunties and others, also teachers. So talagang we're a family of teachers. So before when I when I was studying in high school, na isip ko lang na ay parang dapat may bago naman. Hindi mm -hmm. na ako teacher. Dapat maging uh, health professional naman ako. Mm -hmm. uh, but siguro ano ba? <laughs> Alagi ko sa ginagamit na term pag may tong nagtatanong sa akin nito. Is parang feeling ko medyo na peer na na encourage ako ng mga peers ko to to go into academe. So and again, uh, I don't have any intentions back in college to to go into academe. But mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people kept on telling me that I know how to teach, that I teach well. So mm -hmm. they always give me a comment na ang, ang ayos mong mag-organize ng information, mas madali siya pag ikaw yung nagsasabi. So pwede kang magturo. And siguro yung pinaka naging encouragement ko talaga, um, back uh, when I was in internship, I think sa Loyola, mm -hmm. di ba po, or if, sir, do yung, if you would remember, um, nag-visit, may mga clinical instructor na nag-visit yeah. uh -huh. for the interns every month. And, and ang nag-visit nung month na yun sa amin was Mom Ann Aceron, Dean Ann Aceron. Mm -hmm. And um, nakaleave kasi siya nung time ng student kami. So, hindi talaga kami masyadong close talaga. Hindi, hindi niya rin, na, I think hindi niya naman ako kilala nun per personally that eh, eh wala kaming previous interaction. Tapos nagulat ako kasi while we're preparing for a report, narinig niya ako kung paano ako ayun mag-organize ng report. And then right there and then sinabi niya sa akin, "Uy, pwede kang maging teacher ah." So parang ako, "Ay, talaga ba?" So, ayun, medyo na peer pressure na encourage ng mga peer na yon. Siguro ano rin, uh well, a lesson for that is minsan talaga uh, well, may nagsabi sa akin noon eh na parang sometimes it's good to listen to other people because they see things that you do not see. Kasi uh -huh. ba kung ikaw lang yung tumitingin sa sarili mo, hindi mo man, uh -huh. hindi ka makakapaniwala, uy, kaya ko pala to. Ano? So, right. siguro yun. Yun yung, may nakita yung ibang tao na initially hindi ko nakita. So, uh -huh. yun. So, paano yung steps then? Did you, mm. like, uh, ask uh, okay. Dean if, if there's an opening? Parang ganun? <laughs> Uh, nako, funny talaga yung story ko dito, sir. Oh, no? Diba ganda? So, uh, so initially nga, uh, again, diba, I did not plan for it. Mm -hmm. So, when I, I graduated, as in, and, and I passed the board exam, as in, no idea ko what to do. So, sinabihan lang ako ng mama ko, e, mag-submit ka lang ng, ng CV mo to all of the centers na may opening. And then, tingnan mo kung may mauna. Uh -huh. So, I think I was volunteering back then sa AMRC. Nag-EMRC po ako for one month to volunteer. And then, one day, pagkagising ko na lang, naisip ko, eh, what if mag-submit din ako sa CRS? So, sabi ko, okay, sige, mag-submit ako sa CRS. So, nag-submit po ako on that day. And funny story, when I submitted, Sir D2, Sir Donald Manlapas was there. He was the college secretary back then. And then, when I submitted my paper, sabi niya sa akin, Hello, sorry, kahapon yung deadline. Oh. So, sabi ko, wala, oh my God. Sabi ko, okay, sabi ko, so, sige, sir, okay lang po, no problem. Pero sabi niya sa akin was, ah, sige, but you give your CV because it could be, uh, um, ano ba, it could be, um, parang, itago na lang muna siya and then uh -huh. if ever may opening, we will just call you. Uh -huh. So, parang ko, ah, okay, sige po. 
po. And then that night, I receive a message from Mom Che, from Dean, from Dean Cheryl Peralta, Dr. Cheryl Peralta. And yun nga, she told me na wala ngang opening. So parang mm-hmm. ako, well, kilala mo naman ako. Kumbaga, <laughs> emotional ako. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nung time na yun, naiyak ako. And then, nung umiyak ako, I've inanalyzed ko yung sarili ko. Sabi ko, bakit ako umiiyak? Ayaw ko nga mag-teacher, di ba? Uh-huh. Yun, oh. and then I realized na baka gusto ko siya gusto talaga. Gusto pala nga. Ay, yun. And then, so yun, hindi po, hindi po, di ba? Kasi walang walang opening. But mm-hmm. surprisingly, after two weeks, um, nagkaroon ng changes with regards to the admin because na-promote po, may mga na promote ng mga tao. So, hmm. Ma'am Che, uh, well, initially, hindi pa po siya yung dean doon. She was the department chair. But, uh, on that year, before the academic year started, she became the de- the dean po. So, mm-hmm. since May nag-move up ng mga places, merong naging opening. So, ayun po, sinabihan ako na, uy, pwede ka ulit mag-apply. And then, yun na po, tuloy-tuloy na. Tuloy, so, di ba? Hindi naman talaga siya yung, <laughs> uy, nagturo. Hindi ka, ah. Hindi naman ako yung ni-recommend, hindi naman yung ganun. So, I applied and then yun nga, initially walang slot and then yun, naging ano. So, pr- probably it's really meant for you kung ganun. Siguro po. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're enjoying it. Medyo funny po, kasi hindi talaga siya. No? Hindi siya yung ideal way na yung, alam mo yun, yung nag-apply ka lang and yun na yun. Parang oh, so may ka. mga iba pang nangyari. Yes po. But to be honest, nung nagtuturo ako, again po, dahil hindi ko siya, ang, ang, ang pagkakaintindi ko lang dati is you just teach kung ano yung alam mo. Mm-hmm. Siguro what made me really passionate or uh, what, what made me really passionate about education was taking up yung master's degree ko. Mm-hmm. Because in my master's degree, I was able to meet different teachers. Uh-huh. Teachers uh, sa medicine, teachers ng preschool, teacher ng elementary and high school. And dun ko na-appreciate that uh, education, the teaching is a science and an art at the same time. So, yun. So, parang yeah, you siguro. found mentors in them. Yes, sir. It's and then, dun, dun ko rin realize na if I'm really passionate about research, I have to use education as a tool mm-hmm. so that people would appreciate more research and would get more things using research. So, yun. Parang, ano yan, to combos ko yan, yung research and yung and education. Education. So, parang umiikot lang. So, you research yes, so that you can teach something and you teach something so you can research. Yes, sir. Ganon. Right. <laughs> right? <Yun>. So, <laughs> so, let's go now to one of uh, the uh, topics that we, we were gonna discuss, yung IPEC. So, um, what is IPEC first? This IPEC. Okay, po. So, IPEC is uh, actually composed of two of two concepts. It's mm-hmm. IPE, which mm-hmm. refers to interprofessional education, mm-hmm. is learning about, from, and with other healthcare healthcare professional students. While IPC is interprofessional collaboration, which would be working together with other healthcare professionals. So the I the, the concept IPEC in general came from the framework of WHO back in 2010. So according to WHO, since worldwide, one of the major concern would be really uh, health problems. And aside from health problems, there is a decrease of healthcare professionals. So according to WHO, one of the strategies that uh, every country could do to address these concerns for better health outcomes would be the integration of interprofessional collaboration. But since uh, collaboration is something that is not discussed directly in school, they suggested that IPC should go hand in hand with IPE. So for you to be able to produce uh, healthcare professionals who are collaborative ready, you should have an IPE in place in your curriculum. So, yun po, yung IPEC. Ah, so, so where did you um, learn this concept? Did you attend a seminar or conference? Ah, okay po. Um, well, to be honest, my first exposure for IPEC was when I was asked to accompany uh, USD students to Migata University. 
Mm-hmm. We got the University Health and Welfare, yes, pa, in Japan. Mm-hmm. So they have this uh, yearly one one week IPE program. Them, mm-hmm. wherein IP concepts would be discussed on the first day and for the succeeding days, students coming from different professions would be working together to solve one hypothetical case. And then the last day would be the presentation. So, yeah, that's what that's one of my first exposure. And then after that, um, I tried attending more seminars related to it. And I was, uh, I was, fortunate enough to be given a chance to attend a a one week training by WHO in co- in collaboration with Gunma University uh, also in Japan mm-hmm. uh, about uh, IPEC training so it's actually a free training that is conducted every year mm-hmm. so healthcare professionals and healthcare educate health educators uh, are actually encouraged to attend that that program. It's one week program po, and again, it's funded by the WHO. Also, this is not an, a new concept, so it's it's been around for a long time. Um. Well, to be honest, because when you ask people about collaboration first, they would say na it's really not a new concept. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, right now, kaya po nagkakaroon ng more interest with the IPE mm-hmm. because ngayon lang nagkakaroon ng more publications about it. Correct. Because before, when we talk about collaboration, usually the concepts of majority would be just asking your students to do a group work together. Mm-hmm. But right now, what we're trying to do is to educate people that it's not enough that you ask your students to work together. Because usually when you ask people to work together, there will still be some concerns like conflicts, mm-hmm. differences. So... Uh, um, yung role po ng integrating the IPE is to help people understand or, or to find strategies. How will they resolve conflicts? How will they resolve differences? So this is not just applicable sa practice, but also like in a like a physical therapy setting, but also in education. So parang ganon, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so yes, when we kasi talk about technically okay. collab, ay, sorry pa. No, no. Technically po kasi when sorry po. Technically po kasi collaboration is one of the skills that is required for 21st century learners. Na, na, so mm-hmm. yun yun din yung isa sa mga connection for it. Because mm-hmm. when I when I first heard uh IPEC, so I I thought that parang in in PT school we were taught that there would be times that we would meet with other professionals in the rehab team. So it, I don't know what we, it, it, was it multidisciplinary approach? Parang ganon. Mm. So we, we, we have a meeting, uh, it would, the case would be presented, then the OT would say their part, speech would say their part, the doctor would say their part, and the PT would say their part. So how is it different? From that concept of multidisciplinary approach to a interprofessional collaboration, it would is it different uh, okay. or, or is it the same? Um, well, they are the same because for um, the concept is working together, mm-hmm. but the primary difference would be uh, in multidisciplinary. Um, basically, um, well, if you would look at the model of the inter of the multidisciplinary po. Um, the, there is communication, but mm-hmm. the communication between the healthcare professionals are not constant. It's not constant. Correct. So meaning they just communicate when they when there is a need to communicate. So usually um ang need to communicate na time is kapag medyo malala na yung pasyente. Ah, so this sure. is in contrast with that. Yes, po. This is in contrast with IPE where with IPC wherein ang ang pinaka thrust Talaga, when you go to the model is that there is constant communication with mm-hmm. the healthcare professionals and what um, what was suggested is actually there should be communication before during and after your patient interaction and yun rin po, in the interprofessional model it's really patient centered so mm-hmm. aside from communicating with the healthcare team sometimes for some models they also include the patient in the decision making po ah Oh, that's different. So, yun po. It's really kung saan yung time ng communication. Yun yung pinaka, mm-hmm. ano. 
yun yung mas integral part doon. It's yes, before, during, and after. Yes, sir. Uh, Although, to be honest, mahirap siya. It's very uh, ideal. Because uh-huh. as we all know, um, as healthcare professionals, we have a lot of load, no? Correct. So, yun nga, minsan nga, hindi mo na nakakausap yung relative mo. Eh. What more pa yung other healthcare professional? But, hmm. premise is, if you would work closely together at, the, at an early time, mas magiging lesser yung problem with the patient. You'll, hmm. you'll get your, you'll achieve your goals faster. Hmm. So, yun po. I see that Although working. Although yun lang, again, it's not that, ano po, ay sige pa. Ikaw, go on. Ikaw muna. Ay sige po, makalang, go. Because <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm working in a skilled nursing facility, so I see that working mm-hmm. in a setting na the the professionals are in a in one place. Pero when I was working in ah, home ito. health, it's different because yes. we don't usually meet. Magkikita yes. lang kami once a week for that communication yeah we're going to communicate to the case manager what we found what are problems and issues but you're right it's it's different when you say multidisciplinary because we just we kind of just report what we're seeing yes yes as opposed more of one to, way. yeah as opposed to we deciding together collectively yes, so ma'am. that's yes, ipc Yes, sir. Ah, got it, got it. Although yun lang po, again, logistically, hindi pa po siya, hindi pa, well, hindi pa po siya accepted or hindi pa siya ma, ma-decipher how mm-hmm. will you implement it because logistically, there's still a lot of concerns. But um, I have attended a conference in uh, in Hong Kong. I think that was back in 2018. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was surprised that in Taiwan, Okay. Um, it was mentioned that uh, big hospitals there will not be accredited by their government if they don't practice interprofessional collaboration. Mm-hmm. So they have a model there, pero ang ginagawa po nila, medyo iba po siya from the usual. So ang mangyayari, if tama po ang pagkakaalala, is that before the day starts, uh, yung first hour is really for IPC. So there's a dedicated time for a meeting for IPC and then they would go over all, all of the patients. So yun. it's a very good model but mm-hmm. again, hindi mo naman pwedeng agad ma-implement yung ganong yeah. change for current institutions. So um, currently, marami pang pong studies na nag-try to determine what could be the best model for yeah. for different institutions, for different schools or hospitals. Right, because in the, the perfect world, Yes. Pwede tayo magtawag ng uh, professionals. Okay, let's sit down on this mm-hmm. and be productive with that meeting. Pero having that load, each of the, the professionals, the, the, the healthcare professionals have their own loads. They have to manage their own time as well. Yes. So, yun nga, I think that's logistically may hirapan nga if it's a yes, different yes. setting. But yeah, I see. I think It's a very um, big change. Mm, right, but I think for 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 here in the U.S., um, I don't know if there's a ruling because um, before we were uh, when I was starting here, we are made to sign that we attended the meeting, that we discussed the patient. I think that's also um, part of uh, the uh, I don't know the reimbursement method that the or the accreditation of the agencies that the uh, healthcare professionals are meeting to discuss patients. So I think that's oh, one okay. step closer to that. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, pero yun nga, since step. it's a home health, mahirap nga talaga yung constant communication. Constant well, hmm. to be honest, aside from dun sa day one na hospital setting, hmm. majority of the IP PC models that we've seen are actually integrated in community setting oh, okay. and community-based rehabilitation setting. So, siguro ayun nga po, baka iba-iba pa talaga yung model. So, it's really exciting to ano pa, to explore what could possibly work. But right now, we're very happy kasi more and more people are uh, are aware about IPC. So, that's the initial step naman po for any big changes. <laughs> Right. It's it's for more people to know what it is yes, so that they can see the applicability or yes, probably change in their facility. Uh, yes. So, but you, there was already uh, the Philippine IPEC, right? So how did this come yes, into sir. fruition? 
Um, so the Philippine Interprofessional Education and Collaboration Network was actually a result of a post-conference workshop after the first Philippine Interprofessional Education and Collaboration Conference back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So this idea idea was actually a product of what we call an inter-university collaboration oh. between the University of Santo Tomas College of Rehabilitation Sciences. So for CRS, uh, we had the departments of OTP, speech, and sports science working together for this conference in collaboration with the Angeles University Foundation um, College for Allied Medical Profession or CAMP. So mm. Sa kanila naman po, if we had PT, OT, SLP, and SPS, uh, for them, ang nag-help po with the, with the workshop, uh, with the conference, are majority coming from the pharmacy department and the medical technology department. So it's really an interprofession, it's an interprofessional and an inter-university collaboration po. Oh, okay. So what is... What can we learn from um, the the pharmacy and, and the med side, med med tech side, as as rehab professionals? Ah, okay, wow, okay, so good, mm. good question, Paul. Ah. No? Well, to be honest, um, aside from acad uh, academe, uh, mm -hmm. to be honest, I haven't worked with them yet, Paul. Mm. But I attended one workshop uh, where we had a hypothetical case, mm -hmm. and in our team we had med tech and we had uh, pharmacy. Uh, pharmacist mm -hmm. eh, uh, working on that case and I think primarily yung pinaka matututunan po is really more of on the medications for the pharmacist mm -hmm. and uh -huh. for the medical technologist it would be the different tests mm -hmm. that could uh, lead to results that would be significant for us to consider in exercise prescription. Correct. So um, do you see this um because we're in, in the same building as nursing and, and medicine. Ah, yes, sir. Uh, Do you see a yes, class sir. being formed where it would comprise of uh, the rehab professionals, students, uh, the med students, and the nursing students in, in USC? Actually, sir, the biggest dream for USD since USD is only in, located in one campus yeah. with different professionals, the right. goal is actually to have, ha, huh, hope. <laughs> uh, one one class or one activity that would uh, be com that would be attended not just by healthcare professionals but as well as other students from other disciplines like engineering or architecture. Right. That's the biggest. Oh, so, that, uh, we have yeah. a very good advantage that different students from different disciplines are in one one campus lang po eh. mm -hmm. Pero that's a very, very big dream. But now we are currently starting Paul, with an IPE course for, for the CRS. So if next year, uh, next year, uh, next academic year, first term, we would be offering the first IPE course. And this would be uh, offered to OTPT, speech, and sports science students. So uh, we'll so see what we, will, what we can do after that. Paul. Uh, so the, the, these students from different, like from, from OT. Uh, department they can attend in a class together yes sir yes ah. sir that's what we're planning so pero logistically it's uh -huh. still managed <laughs> Kasi uh -huh. nga po, as you know there uh -huh. are some concerns with classroom reservation Correct. by the schedules of students so we're still uh, finding the best way to mm -hmm. uh to have an ip a so-called ipe day that will be dedicated for ip activities next term so hopefully po, we can do that yeah, that's a good training ground because here, because ganun nga sa amin, ganun din, meron coming meeting and we discuss things. Pero it would be nice uh, it, if it's students, uh, yeah, at a student level, na, na, na practice nila yon. So, like, what does OT uh, yeah. do for a patient? What uh, does yes, SLP sir. students do for a patient? Or what can sports science or uh, uh, personal or professionals do to uh, with a patient. So, yes, magandang sir. na train na sila. Yes, sir. And para magkakilala-kilala na rin sila kasi they're just in one college, in one building. Correct. And they will be there for four, at least four years. So, yun, maganda na rin naman oh. po talaga. Might as well get acquainted. You start yes, your network sir. in school na. 
All right. So recently, you were part of uh, the committee. <laughs> yes. You sir. were were you appointed, elected in the committee uh, for the World Confederation of Physical Therapy. Yes. Sir. WCPD. Big um, I time. was. I was. I was selected. So okay. for that one, po, um, if you would remember, if you would go back to the WCPD social media and website. Um, after the Geneva Congress in 2019, I think that was in May, uh, they had a call for Congress Program Committee members. Mm. So the goal of WCPT, since WCPT acts as the voice for all the physical therapists worldwide, mm -hmm. for so for example, if there are meetings uh, in WHO where uh -huh. w, where PTs should be represented, WCPT would be the one to represent for the show so uh in their goal to be inclusive okay? so ang nangyari po is they made a call okay, for people who are interested to be part in the congress program committee so basically the congress program committee is the scientific committee the scientific committee for the wcpt congress so yun po so they they posted the job uh, they posted the call and then um I tried it. <laughs> I just tried it po. Uh, kasi technically, um, you, everyone could try it. Kasi uh, you don't have to pay for anything. All you need to do is just submit your requirements, your CV, your past experiences, and then that's it. So I just tried it and um, ayun po, surprisingly, you got the fortunately, job. <laughs> I was, yes, well, I was selected. Um, and then right now, I'm very fortunate because I'm really, I'm working together with other experts and uh, other experts uh, from all over the world. So our committee right now is very inclusive. We have we have um, we have members coming from Australia, from Canada, from Africa, from Israel, from the Middle East, and yeah, from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. uh, London, uh, rin pala, London, London, London. So many all over the yes, world. So yeah. as as part of that scientific committee, are you the ones deciding? Uh, what topics are going to be uh, presented or what what studies are going to be presented orally in a poster yes sir uh well for that, that one po um so siguro to give everyone an idea again the wcpt goal is as much as possible is to to make a pro our goal is to make a program that would cater to the different to the diverse needs right? or right, the diverse right. interests of the whole of the worldwide facial therapist so technically if you would go to the wcpt web wcpt congress website you would see there that a big part of the program is actually based on the submissions of people who are interested to present mm -hmm. so recently we had the focus symposia submission and then on april we'll be having your research submission research paper submission and your uh, submissions for in that session so again we get the contents from the submissions of special therapists worldwide and the congress program committee would be primarily um, responsible for screening these submissions and determining at the end which will best uh, uh, which will be best um, delivered during the congress taking in consideration Duration po yung naging result market survey for uh, that was answered by worldwide facial therapist. So yun uh, po, it's really more of screening and mm -hmm. later on at the end po uh, ident identifying ano yung ano yung magiging buong structure ng program. But again, we're not the only one who's deciding. It's primarily dependent on the submissions that we will be receiving. Po. Uh, gotcha. So considering considering what what the possible attendees would like to listen to or would yes, like sir. to see yes, in, in the conference. So when is the WCPT Congress or conference uh, be held this uh, next year, right? 2021? Uh, well, yes, sir. It will be in 2021. It will be from April 8 to April 10. Mm -hmm. So it will be in Dubai Convention Center. So UAE. Oh, nice. So, uh, in your opinion, why should like a Filipino ther therapist be aware of the WCPT? Because mm. we're well, there's a lot like 
in the Philippines, hindi masyadong, maraming tao na, bakit nga ba ako sasari sa PPTA? Maraming ganong sentiments. Yes, totoo naman. Eh, mahabang debate yun. Lahat naman. Yes, I think sir. lahat naman. Yes, Even here yes, in sir. APTA, may ganon. Pero, yes, sir. For, for you, uh, you're worldwide working there. Naman po. Worldwide uh, concern. So, for you, working there close with other uh, people, physios in different parts of uh, the world, why do you think uh, involve, we should in, be involved in the WCPT as, as physios? Yes. Ah, hi pa. So, sir, just to clarify po, no, um, when we talk about WCPT, there is no individual membership. Correct. So, the members for WCPT would be the member organizations or the country organizations for official therapists. Mm -hmm. So, if, for example, PPTA is a member of WCPT, then the, masasama na po yung yeah, members ng PPTA. Okay. But it's really the organization. Pero mm -hmm. po, to answer your question, why is it important for us to be part of such organization? Or be aware, because, at least be aware of yes, what so, the WCPT is. Be aware, or be aware, or be part, uh, so be aware na lang muna. Sige. Nah, nah. Be aware, it's because um, generally, these organizations were constructed or were they were they were organized primarily because of us, because of mm -hmm. official therapists. Okay? Okay. So, um, ang primary job nila is to be the voice and this organization po will not know kung ano ba yung dapat nilang sabihin if no other PTs would tell them po kung ano yung sasabihin nila. Parang katulad din doon sa paggawa ng Congress, ng, ng Congress program eh. Um, it's really not the people in the organization who's primarily deciding we need the involvement of other people. Uh, para makapag-decide kami which will best work for the profession. So, same with being aware and being part of organizations. And yun, if you want to be heard, you have to you have to tell, you have to voice out po yung opinion right. ninyo. And the best way is really to go dun sa process na you, you involve yourself with organizations. Correct. And, <laughs> yeah, is, and also like being part of these organizations, letting your voice heard these organizations advocate for our profession eh? yes sir. so like uh being as uh, as ppt like ppta being part of wcbt ppta can ask for help if there's um yes sir uh things that the ppta need in in cases like uh, yes, legislation policy yes sir actually sir we are Currently, uh, so since I think you are aware that we are in the process of lobbying the new, our new bill for physical therapy right. in, yeah. here in the Philippines. So we already received some um, some support from the WCPT officers. So help, uh, from, particularly from from the CEO Jonathan Kruger, since he went here last year in the Philippines. So they are uh, willing to help us by providing documents. Or evidences regarding uh, the reach, the importance of physical therapy worldwide. So, yun po. So, hopefully, these documents would help us mm -hmm. eh, uh, na ma lobby successfully yung right. law, new law natin. Are there any significant changes to the law that we're lobbying? Um, well, if you would go online, po, you yeah. would see in the Congress, mm -hmm. uh, sa Congress website, kung ano po yung current version na, na, na lobby natin. Mm -hmm. But, uh, kasi medyo mahaba pa yung mga changes. But one of the primary changes would be, of course, on the board examination. Uh -huh. Since yung feeling po kasi nagkaroon ng change. So definitely, meron rin po yung change. And this change was actually also um, identified because of the change in the curriculum. Because okay. as we all know, we already shifted to outcomes-based clinical mm -hmm. education. Uh, outcomes-based education. So mm -hmm. it's really more of on the outcomes rather more on the theories. So one of the major changes would be on the board examination. Um, with regards to the practice, meron na pong mga specific guidelines, scope of practice for physical therapy, which were very general nung unang-unang law na medyo matagal na po. That's right. So, yun, yun po. so hopefully, maano pa rin naman po yun eh. When we talk to the, when we when we visited Cong the congresswoman who helped us lobby the, the bill po, I think that was last February, um, sinabi niya po sa amin na um, kapag nag-lobby tayo, there could still be changes depending right. on the 
depending on the discussion. So, yun. So, hopefully, more people would attend that so that they could voice out po and they could also help po in, in finalizing the bill that will be that will be approved. <laughs> yeah. So, it's important really for every physical therapist, kung meron silang gustong sabihin, kailangan sabihin talaga. They have to really yes, express <laughs> their sentiments. Now, proper rin po yung medium. Correct. Proper medium. Tama. <laughs> Hindi lang yung magpo-post anywhere. Tama. Yes, sir. Yes, right. sir. Apo. Apo. Although, ano naman eh, uh, trial and error naman yan for other people eh. So, so right. basta ang importante is, yun nga, siguro tama po kayo, they have to be aware. So, mm-hmm. and then at the same time, pag naging aware sila, they could take part and later on, uh, be more active by, yun nga, by helping out, by voicing mm-hmm. out what, what they what are the suggestions? What are their needs? Yeah, because like any organization, it's a numbers game. So if we are, yes. if, yes. if PPTA members or even like physiotherapists, physical therapists are not active in the organization, ano nila maseseryoso yung organization kung wala naman masyadong active? Yes, sir. Yeah, so exactly. it, that's why it's really important to be active with the organizations. So speaking of being active, and now in organization, so saan ba nagsimula yung pagiging active mo. I, I know that you... Hi, even, <laughs> yeah, bef- you, when you were a student, right, you were active in the... Um, what's that? The, PT Society. Uh, ah, the, the student side, right? PT Society po for uh-huh. the UST and we also uh-huh. have yung Association for Philippine Physical Therapy Students. Yes, yeah, ma'am. right. So, doon na nagsimula ang pagiging active mo sa mga... Pero sir, kwento ulit, no? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pinramis ko din sa sarili ko bago ako mag-college na hindi ako mag-o-org. Uh-huh. <laughs> as in, as in, I promised myself kasi sabi ko kailangan kong graduate with honors. Kailangan uh-huh. maging mataas yung grade ko. So, sabi ko hindi ako mag-organization. So, uh-huh. funny story po ulit. Um, ano ba? Nag- uh, do you remember comparative anatomy po before? Yeah. We had uh-huh. comparative anatomy. So, we were reviewing for our practical exam. And then, uh, may isang offer from PT Society. Kasi we were first year back then po. So, one officer asked us, uh, approached us and then asked us kung pwede po bang may mga ta- may mga first year na umattend with the election. Because mm-hmm. kailangan daw po maging represented ng first year during the election. Eh, wala pong nag sa mga kasama ko. Eh, na-frustrate na ako kasi parang paulit-ulit kaming tinatanong. So, sabi ko, sige na nga, aakyat na nga ako, buboto lang naman. Uh-huh. Eh, ayun, nung, nung, nung nandun na po kami, eh, syempre mas matatanda sa amin yung mga nandun, no? Someone, uh, someone, ano po, parang suggested na yung isa sa amin maging officer. Ayun na po, <laughs> nagtuloy-tuloy na from then. So, ayun po, I, I became a committee member for Peter Society uh, the year after. And then after that, siguro po, yun nga, mas na appreciate ko being part of an organization. Siguro, what I really like about organization would be it's more of helping other people mm-hmm. na ma-appreciate okay, and, uh, and ma-reach yung potential. Kasi yun naman talaga yung goal of any organization. The organization is really for the members. So, yun. So, yun. After that, PT Society, yung isang babaeng ayaw mag-org. <laughs> Ay, nasimulan <laughs> po namin yung <laughs> Association for uh, for Philippine Physical Therapy Students. So, it will become 10 years na po next year. Wow, na. <laughs> and then, <laughs> ayun po, after that, sabi ko rin, hindi na ako mag-o-org pagka-graduate ko. But, ayun po, PPTA. PPTA, <laughs> and right. And then, ayun nga, sabi ko rin, so, yun po, WCPT. So, yun po. Siguro kasi, that, yung mga ginagawa po nila, uh, I agree with the things that they are advocating. Mm-hmm. Kaya siguro I enjoy working with them and it is my hope that other people would see as well kung ano ba yung kung ano ba yung truly na ina-advocate ng organizations na yun. So, right. yun. <laughs> so, tama naman. Kasi to be able to... Pero mahaba pang, uh, ano, mahaba pang process. <laughs> mahaba pang process. <laughs> right? But to be able to spark change, you have to be active in, in organization in those organizations hindi lang yung um you you be on the sideline ibang ways pero yun uh-huh. yeah you don't have to be a, a an officer an officer yes, yes. you don't have to be an officer you don't have to be an officer Tsaka, um i think the the wrong notion is the or the officers are the organization pero hindi yes. 
Yes. It's, it's the members. Not, it's really the members. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. It's really the members who who comprise or the core of the organization. That's why memberships, uh, members' participation is really vital. Right. Right. So, because some, some members would just rely on the officers to do everything. It's okay naman na your presence are known, but if if you're gonna uh, say a lot of things without an action, so parang wala ka rin namang ginawa. So, yeah, it's better to be active, be present, be active, uh, voice out your concerns para naman marili at magawa ng paraan. Right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Again, thank you for your time. Papunta na tayo sa ending ng ating interview. So I just uh, have, okay. I just have three, um, um, three last questions. Yeah, three last okay. questions. Three. Okay, yeah, three. go. Right. So uh, first one, um, if you're not in your current field or uh, position as physical therapy, so kung hindi ka in the academia, hindi ka PT, uh, where, where do you think you are? Um, siguro po, if I will not be an academe, siguro uh, hindi po talaga mawawala sa akin yung research. Uh, one of the things that I am, that I tried exploring before would be uh, working as a researcher in public health setting. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, yun po. Siguro may po talaga ako mag-research and I really like health. So, um, one of the things that I like doing is yun nga, uh, siguro get information and making sense of those information so that people in the health setting for example for barangay health centers they could uh, get they could make uh, better decisions mm -hmm. eh? kasi ang 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 lagi kong naiisip is bakit laging yung mga taga ibang bansa yung kinukuhang participant yung mga Filipino <laughs> bakit Maybe. hindi yung mga Filipino na lang yung kumuha ng sarili nilang data mag-analyze ng sarili nilang data and and mag make decision based on their own data. So I think it's the right time na naman eh. Marami na tayong mga professionals who could help uh, the the different uh, local government units to make their own decisions using their own data. So Correct. yun, baka yun po. <laughs> Kasi I, I think that the Philippines has a unique setting for everything. Um, yeah, we have the community, we have like pediatrics, yes, we have like community dwelling adults. And dami eh. Yes, na yung pwedeng population na pwedeng yes, research. Yes, sir. So, I, yeah, yes, sir. I, sana nga maraming, maraming okay. tayo maproduce. Kailangan lang ng data, kailangan lang ma-analyze. Exactly. Yun. Pero madaming pwedeng gawin, sobrang dami. At sana, ma ano din, ma-share din sa mundo. I mean, Kasi yes, marami, marami naman tayong, uh, the, the universities produce researches every year. Yes, pero, sir. Uh, we are not familiar uh, with the studies in other universities. Parang hindi, hindi naman na ilalabas or kung may na ilalabas, ko konti. So, yes, sir. sana there would be, a, I don't know, data registry or a, a, a collective. Yes, Hope Hopefully, oh, yan yung yeah. mga magandang good na magkaroon talaga ng, ng, ng database oh. ay, para mas maging mabilis yung decision making. Nakita nyo po ba, ay, nagkwentuhan na, no? Nakita oh, <laughs> po ba yung sa Taiwan? Oh, how, no. they, how they address their concern with uh, COVID 2019? They made use of data. They just oh. made, use, made use of data. They collected data, they analyzed data, and they made decisions based on their data. Ah, so see? <laughs> Talaga. Diba? Ang yes, galing sir. mga ganon. I Kailangan think can, kayo. <laughs> Filipinos can do that naman din. Yes. I think. Kailangan lang talaga ng willpower. <laughs> yes, sir. So, so hopefully, yun, well, yun po yung naisip ko if hindi po ako nasa academe. Right. Still in research. Still, still in, in research. Yeah, <laughs> healthcare. Uh, second question. So in your to the last. <laughs> in your career, ten years, right? Almost ten years. Almost ten years. I'm gonna eight, na po. I'm gonna eight, eight years. I'm gonna eight years. Uh, who do you consider as your uh, uh, mentor or role model? Ah, uh, mentors. Ay, madami uh, po. <laughs> madami. Okay. <laughs> Sino yung sobrang madami. Sobrang madami uh, ba? For me, po kasi. Eh, Who do you want to give a shout out? Ah, okay. 
Pero ang pinaka number one ko na mentor is Sige. I think it could be I think most of people know this naman po. It's Dr. Cheryl Peralta, my mm-hmm. professors. Uh, one of my professors in uh in CRS before he was the one who re- she, she, she was one of the persons who really encouraged me to pursue research to pursue academics po and mm-hmm. then nung nagsa-start na ako mag-work um Bob Dean Ana Seron mm-hmm. uh Sir Donald Departo Sir Donald Manlapas um I also have I'm very fortunate because because since I was part of APPTS um I also had an opportunity opportunity to be mentored by um Gaylene Manalang of UP of UP College of Public Health okay? mm. and then yung mga ibang officers na rin for PPT so madami po so madami talaga so yes, siguro yung advantage ko for being part of the organization I got to meet really cool people uh-huh. na very inspiring so yun po exactly actually ngayon ko lang na appreciate yung networking to to know other people yes, sir from different um, yes, uh, uh, settings. Sabi ko, bakit parang yes, late sir. ko na discover yung ganito? Yes, sir. Kasi, yes, sir. Please attend the, <laughs> yeah. the WCPT Congress. <laughs> I will attend. I will attend. Gagawa ko ng paraan. Nakapunta lang <laughs> sa Dubai to attend WCPT. Mm. That's yes, so, one of the greatest opportunities for WCPT. It's your opportunity to network. Correct. And and to meet people na with your same interest coming from a different yes, country. Yes, So, bago perspective. So, do yes, some mentors that na mentioned mo, what do you feel is their like collective trait that you um that inspired you or probably oh, you aspire to nice. be? Na, so, siguro po ano their their decision to be involved with things na ayo may involve ng mga tao. Kasi po, if you would look at them, um, they are working in the academy and not all people like to work in the academy. Correct. They're also very active with... Re- oh, kaya siguro ako napunta dito, no? They're also <laughs> very interested. They're also helping out with, uh, for example, guidelines mm-hmm. that would help the private institutions and the public institutions po. So for example, for CHED, for PRC, they're active mm-hmm. about those things. And siguro yun po yung pinaka natuwa ako and Kasi not all people would step up po eh, to be involved right. with those kinds of things. Although toxic siya, mm-hmm. but seeing that other people would like to be involved uh, somehow made me realize na, oh, these, inf- these things, these issues are also important. And kailangan nandun, din na, nandun rin ako. And may maitulong lang din. May maitulong rin ako. Mm-hmm. Yan nga, YOLO, sabi nila. Yeah. Ang YOLO ko is yun. You have to be involved in as much as possible to help out kung ano man yung kaya mo maitulong. So, siguro yun po. They are involved and as much as possible, they really help a lot of people. That's why, mm-hmm. yun. siguro yun nga po. Oh, I see. So, yeah, involvement takes a lot of courage kasi sometimes you'd yes, be sir. put in Totoo a position Yes, na sir, you're not comfortable with but you still do it. Yes, I agree with that. You, you want to do it. Um, so it takes really a lot of courage. Yes. All right, so last but, question. Sir, oh, wait so, lang. Oh, go. Tutungan ko yan. Go, go. <laughs> Tutungan ko yan. Pero, yan nga. Ako rin naman, uh, I have a fear before nung pagiging involved. Ang sabi ko nga dati is that parang feeling ko before I get involved with PPTA, I still need to get a lot of credentials. Mm-hmm. Kasi nga parang ang mga kilala ko na PPTA members where, yun nga, sa Lamomche, mm-hmm. sa La Sir Diwan, so yung parang talagang, ano na sila, marami na silang, ano ba, marami na silang na-achieve in life, uh-huh. okay? Right. But, then later on, I found out na yung fear mo of, if yung fear mo of not being enough to be involved mm-hmm. is something na, ano ba? Insignificant? Something na, insignificant kasi once you be involved with uh, with such uh, with such activities you get to know more things about yourself mm-hmm. and surprisingly mapupush mo pa yung sarili mo ma-open mo pa yung boundaries mo for a lot of things so parang yung WCPD sir to be honest at first sabi ko ang kapal naman ng mukha ko to submit for what oh. kasi nga when looking at the Congress Program Committee last in Geneva, they were all really, ano ba, experts now on their field. They have published a lot of things already. But 
again, sometimes yung fear mo na yun, surprise ka, yung nakakatakot na part is only the first step. But after the first step, surprisingly, madami lang, mas madali na siya. So, yun. Try nyo lang po. Try to be involved. Okay? And you would be surprised ano yung mga pwedeng mangyari. Tama. Taking the leap, right? <laughs> Alright, so ito na. Last question. Okay. Well, well, last tough my surprise from my Anong surprise? <laughs> no, last question. So, uh, for so you're in the academy. So, sabi na lang natin for the students, for those who are are interested in uh in what you're doing right now in your field, being active in the organizations or in being involved in research. What advice can you give them? Uh, uh, siguro, yun po. Don't be afraid. Mm-hmm. Okay? Don't be afraid in trying this this field. Uh, do not over do not underestimate yourself. Uh, because technically, um, yung experts the man, they were not born experts. They had to undergo a lot of training. They had to right. undergo a lot of experiences for them to become expert. So if you think that right now you're still not an expert, it's okay. Eh? Because it means that there's still a lot of things for, for you to learn. There's still a lot of for opportunities for you to grow, for you to become an expert someday. Eh? It's really a process. Eh? Hindi naman siya nung instant lang. Eh? So, yun. so just don't be afraid. A, ask questions, ask help, A, and uh, do not afraid to make mistakes. Ah, that's a that's a good advice. <laughs> In the end. Okay, so yeah, again, thank you for uh, accepting my yes, invitation sa uh, small project kong ito. <laughs> At yes, I sir, you... good luck then, sir. <laughs> and sana magtuloy-tuloy. This has a really good potential po. And mm-hmm. uh, good yung yung vision for this one. So I'm mm-hmm. rooting for you po. I hope a lot of people, I, I know a lot of people would be um, inspired by your story and, and what we have discussed. Here. Sana. <laughs> I, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, that's, uh, in yung call for action natin is to be involved. In yung ating mm, yes, adro. sir. It's really to be involved. Hmm. Pabaon sa kanina. So, ito na. As closing, ito na yung last talaga. <laughs> ah, sige, uh, sir. Ano ba to? Because <laughs> this is, uh, uh, the, the podcast is PT Meal, right? So, as a last question, what are um, the three ingredients or stuff? Three ingredients. Three ingredients. Because it's a meal. Eh? This episode is a meal. Uh, okay. Three ingredients okay. that you always carry with you uh, in your life right now, professional life or, or your life in general, that you think are essential, uh, that you carry with you uh, every, day, every, every day, every day, every day of life. That kind of reminds me, reminds you of like where you've been and where you're going. So it can be a person, it can be an event, it can be a characteristic. So what are the three stuff, three ingredients that you always carry with you? (laughs) 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 That you feel are important for life, your career life, professional life, or life in general? Um, Well, Sigurd, for right now, on, on, on the top of my head, one of the things that I'm trying to to do as much as possible and to remember is that I always need to have an open mind for things. Um, because technically, you do, can't, you, you do, do not just learn from experts. You can actually learn a lot of things from all people, from all mm-hmm. the time, from all places. So right now, um, one of the things that I'm always reminding myself is I have to be open-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, na yun nga, na lahat ng tao meron silang iba't ibang point of view. Okay? So I have to respect that and I have to understand kung saan sila nanggagaling before I make a decision. Siguro, yun nga, IPE, yung pag IP ko yung yung responsible for that one but again it's it's really openness and then essential things openness uh openness to learn uh openness to learn um 
openness for mistakes for okay. openness okay. Uh, <laughs> openness to learn openness for mistakes and mm, I'm really close with my family po eh. so mm. I have to say na they're what they're really one of the reason uh, one of the things po na lagi ko iniisip every now and then and um uh, Yun, yun sir ang hirap <laughs> ang hirap right. wala naman tamang sag wala naman tamang sag it's it's Pero for, your essential for me yun po kasi talaga eh. every time i make a decision those are the things that i consider and yun din yung family ko rin po lagi lagi right so being Parang open enough, minded pero sige yun talaga ako eh. <laughs> Being open-minded in learning, being open to committing yes, mistakes. Yes, open-minded in learning, open in mistakes. And, and then family talaga considering your family and the decisions that you made. And of course, the, the previous lessons that you, you, you discussed with us, being involved, taking action, and being active. Yes, sir. Very yes, important. Sir. All right. Thank you again, Kath. And I hope this is not the last time that we talk. <laughs> <laughs> if matutuwa ka <laughs> Alright, I think it's stopped. Thank you, Rinpo.